Hi there. So a while ago, I posted some videos on how to use Replicate to run AI models, uh, whether it's stable diffusion for image or other like text generation models. It all depends on what you want to do. Uh, but a common comment and a common request was uh, webhooks. Can you please explain how you set up webhooks in Replicate? So in this video, I'm going to give a brief rundown on particularly just on webhooks and bubble and Replicate. All right, so let's dive in. Uh, the first thing I'd like to uh, point out is take a look at replicate.com slash doc slash webhooks. They've got a video. They've got a nice detailed doc on what webhooks are. Essentially, when we make an API call to Replicate, we tell them Replicate, uh, generate an image using this model, this is the prompt. And then bubble server is supposed to just like do nothing and wait. When the processing is done, 30 seconds, 40 seconds later, in replicate, replicate's gonna ping, here's your result back. And on bubble side, we can receive the result. Okay, so it's not in your front end, it's not when your browser, but on bubble servers back end side, it will receive uh, the result back using a webhook. Now in Bubble, you can configure webhooks. Uh, how you do it is the first step you have to do is click settings, uh, go to API and make sure you enable workflow API and backend workflows. Okay, so make sure you enable this. When you enable this, it's, you have to be on a paid plan for this to, uh, to work. Uh, You'll, open, uh, you'll unlock this section, backend workflows, all right? So I'm, I've got a few already, but I'm gonna create a new one. So if I click uh, just new API workflow, uh, amazing replicate webhook, okay? Uh, I'm gonna take a few options. These are a bit dangerous and not recommended, but for the purpose of the tutorial, uh, just expose the, the first one you have to do anyways. Without authentication, ideally you should be authenticating uh, uh, any input coming from Replicate or verifying it. Uh, ignore privacy rules as well. Uh, we don't have to do this. It just varies. This is a nice tutorial hacky way, uh, but this endpoint is insecure at the moment. Okay, the next step afterwards, uh, click here, detect request data. Once I click the direct request data, I've got this detect data opening up. So I'm going to open another uh, bubble editor. Uh, when I click detect data, here's what it's showing. So what bubble server is at the moment doing is, can you just send me a request? I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to receive a request on this endpoint. Send me one so that I can understand the format of the request. The first time around, I'm just understanding the format. I'm just initializing it. The next time around, I'll know the format and I'll make sure it runs accordingly. So we need to click here, it copies this. Uh, when I make an API call, so the thing you have to do is replicate. Uh, we can pick stable diffusion llama is fine. Uh, it's api.com slash predictions. Here's the version, top input, prompt, token, temperature, whatever you want. Here's the two parameters you need to add, webhook and webhook events filter, okay? So here you need to, I'll just replace it with my, whatever I copied, initialize, okay? So once this is done, I click reinitialize call. So this ID, it just started. So this is the ID, these are the max tokens. How do you make Ratatouille? Uh, it's passing it to the Llama model to generate a piece of text. Uh, if I look HHW27, if I look at the other tab, the you know how it was displaying, I'm ready to receive a request. This is the webhook request that has been received now. And here's the raw model, HHW27. This is the answer. This is the, these are the logs. This is all the output uh, tokens generated. And uh, we've received a webhook here now. So this webhook has now been initialized. You have to initialize a webhook before it just magically starts running. And by initializing, bubble servers have to understand the data structure coming into this endpoint. So I can click save here. Now that it's initialized, uh, just to prove what's going on here, I'm just gonna create some logs. With webhooks, it's a bit hard to debug, uh, but create a thing, logs and a text. And you can see this request data. So that's what came in from the webhook. Request data, ID, uh, let me just put uh, another text as well. 
uh, request data, what else, what else? Maybe output, uh, but output was that large list of text. Okay, let's see. And now the next time around, just to be, care be careful here, the next time around I have to run this, I have to remove initialize. Okay, because initialize was a special state for the webhook for bubbles configuration, where it was just trying to understand the structure. Initialize is not the actual endpoint. Without initialize is the endpoint. Okay, so next time around, let me just how do I make brownies? Uh, reinitialize the call. So again, we've told replicate, please run this generation. How do you make brownies? This is the ID S G J O T. Uh, then if I look at, so I'm not in initialize mode, so the editor won't tell me. That's why logs is the place where I tend to like just create a thing in the log and actually look at the logs. So if I look here, SGJOT, are we talking about baking brownies or specifically asking how to make brownie mixes for cooking brownies at home? So we got a generation back, okay? This is just our log. You can look at Bubble's own logs they are a bit harder to read. You have to make sure you look at logs, server logs, two minutes or whatever time ago. Show this advanced section. Make sure you take HTTP request and response request API workflow. This is the one. Uh, click search and you'll see uh, anonymous user. This is the API workflow received from Replicate. How do you make brownies? And uh, here's the answer that we've received. This is a bit harder to read. That's why I slightly prefer making my own logs. Do a few fields at least to make sure it's working. Keep in mind, this is running as an anonymous user. It does not running as current user, a very common mistake. We think we're sending it from the front end workflow. So I'll just use current user in the back end workflow. No, totally different computers and places. Uh, the front end browser, your computer, the bubble server backend, different computer, replicate sending, no current user. So don't use current user here. Uh, it shows up here. Maybe there should be a warning by bubble here. Are you sure you want to use current user in a webhook? Uh, current user works if you do schedule API workflow from the front end because that passes the user alongside it because bubble is logged in, front end, logged in, current user works, you can pass it from schedule API workflow and it's fine. But if it's a webhook, okay, uh, like this detect data mode, detect request data mode, I'm sure with detect request data mode, uh, this current user can have an exclamation mark or maybe just not exist even. Uh, but that's a separate topic. Now, what else? Okay, one other thing, which is a common issue as well, is now we've, when we make an API call, okay, We've configured the webhook to be version dash test. Okay, that's because we're working here. But in production, we are not using version dash test. So what we need to do is make sure we put a square brackets here, which makes this parameter, was it square brackets? Oh, not square, it's this one, uh, this one, this one, and here. So test, so it's not private, uh, and even the prompt, I mean, you probably, you don't want to, you don't want the prompt here. Otherwise you're leaking the prompt. Okay. Do not put the prompt in the API call. Uh, uh, you're leaking it a lot. So that's a security would be a separate topic, a separate video. I do mention it briefly in one of my videos. Do check out the channel, please like, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah. So when I'm running this API call, in a workflow somewhere, whether it's in the back end, front end, wherever, I just make sure I have to pass test or the right, uh, what's it called? Uh, if I make a page, uh, nope, not reusable element, uh, test webhook. So if, yeah, so first of all, you need baking sheets, so a lot more stuff. Uh, button start uh, stable diffusion this one yeah so here I just need to pass app version okay so when it's running in production it will send live when it's running in test it will send test okay and the webhooks again so this uh, if I where's the 
So this is version test webhook URL. If I just deploy this to live just because test uh, and I switch to live and then I'll show you uh, what because the endpoint URL changes in version live. It, you can have it without version dash live, but it's the same thing. Uh, version dash live is uh, works as well. So it's, uh, so this page uh, is the same as version dash live page. So the webhooks work the same way as well. It's not showing here version dash live, which is fine. It shouldn't. Uh, there's no need to. Uh, but these backend webhooks, uh, this uh, blank webhook, replicate, no, amazing replicate web, that was the one I was using for explaining it. Uh, this here detect shouldn't work, yeah, because we're on version live now. Uh, but this endpoint is version dash live, not version dash test. And what else can I cover? So we covered how to, we covered a brief like, okay, you can run a stable diffusion replicate API call. We covered some webhook docs. Definitely, their docs. This video, it's good. Understand webhooks. What's it? What? What's going on? Uh, we need to pass the webhook URL, and this filter is optional. You, I generally people want stuff on completion. You could potentially just accept more webhooks. Processing, starting, succeeded to give maybe a bit more state uh, here. So there's like there's other statuses as well. Uh, if you don't want to filter them and yes, start out logs completed. Yeah, there's, there's four filter log types. Completed is a good one. Start is a good one as well, potentially, uh, that you want to know when it's started because sometimes replicate can take, have a little bit of a lag uh, when it's actually starting, depending on workload. So API call, pass these parameters understanding webhooks, how to set up a new one, detect data, uh, just some basic logs and and explaining how version test and live works and this webhook filter. And I think I've covered just about everything that's needed uh, to so that you guys are off to a good start. If there's any questions or comments, just drop a comment on the video below and happy to help. Thanks. Bye.